What's this one called? IPA. Uh, India Pale Ale. Is it spicy, Kev? Because I can't do spicy. Oh, no, no, no. They just, they just call it India. It, it's, um, it's g give it a try, Ned. I, I think you really like it. It's a bit spicy, Kev. I can't do spicy. I just better stick with the lager. Okay, Ned, one, one lager coming up again. <laughs> Glad there's a big joke to you, Arlene. And our one sale in the past hour, and I'm throwing a perfectly good beer down the drain. It's not a joke if it costs me money. That's not true. You can put a price on hysterical comedy, Kev. For instance, what is the going rate for a cassette of the legendary comedian Sinbad? Who told you I had a Sinbad tape in my car? Sinbad is timeless, by the way. Hey, Kev, I've got Doug on the phone from the suppliers. He wants to know if. What? It's so funny. Uh, he wants to sell the hops you've got on hold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Doug! Hey, man! You were right. He actually has a Sinbad tape in his car. Oh, please don't tell me he's going through a Sinbad phase again. There's a Sinbad phase? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know I said a month, Doug, but I'm, I'm just, I'm asking for another month. Kev, I want to, but I'm gonna call some Razor Brew and ask him for those hops daily. Between you and me, uh, Business has been a little slow lately, and you know, with the Barley Fest coming up, I, I really wanted that Citra for a, for a batch of our special season. I, we thought I'd, I, I got nothing for the, for the judges. I'll hang on them for two more weeks. They don't have to sell them. Just please don't sell the Razor. Kev, I'll sell them whoever wants them. If it happens to be Razor Brewing, so be it. I'm running a business too. I know, I know. Uh, thanks, Doug. Thanks. Who was that? Oh, jeez, Ludd, you scared the shit out of me. Was that Doug? You tell that son of a bitch to start getting us better hops. Okay, you hear that, Doug? Better hops. He hung up, Lud. I'm serious, Kev. The stuff he's been giving us is crap. How am I supposed to create a transcendental craft beer experience when I have to work with lime clippings for hops? It's not on the phone. And another thing. I need a bigger mash ton. We are not getting a bigger mash ton. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna quit. Okay, first off, no you won't. And second, there's nothing wrong with the mash ton we got. I thought you said you wanted to win a medal in the Barley Fest this year. Well, yeah. Win a medal and they'll finally take us seriously. Yeah. I've done the math, Kev. Oh, creepy. I've taken the winners from the past 15 years and put them into a graph, and guess what? Huh. There's trends. Okay. Predictable data, Kev. Using this information, I can extrapolate what will be required for this year's champ. Sounds far-fetched. Yeah, well, you won't be saying that when I brew you a groundbreaking, palate melting, triple malted, double hopped, dark IPA finished in an oak cask named, and this is not negotiable, the game changer. Absolutely not calling it that. Look, Kev, I have done the math on this game changer batch. I'm still not calling it We're that. We're talking IBUs through the roof. One pint of this, and you're gonna have to hire a tiny little man with an adorable little push broom to sweep all the IBUs from your tonsils. Ew. <laughs> Look, I need those citra hops and oak casks. Oak casks? Where the hell am I gonna get oak casks? The supplier. They're five hundred dollars each. Five hundred bucks? Are you insane? We can't afford that right now, Lud. No. I'm sorry. Okay. Then I walk. Kelsey. Ludwig wants to buy some oak casks for a batch of beer. Can we afford that? How much are they? 500 bucks a piece, and we'll need at least... Five. <laughs> Can we do it? Yeah, sure, no problem. We just all need to forfeit our pay for the next four weeks. Should we take a vote? All in favor? Come on! We just can't afford it. What? I love you, you're my brother, and you are a hell of a brewer, but sometimes you're as thick as an imperial stout. I'm sorry, Lud. Man, I'm sorry all you guys. Man, I thought this place would be more successful. But these breweries like Razor, they come in with their hipster branding, their 
hipster social media and their big expensive hipster addresses. I mean, it, it sucks. I don't know what I was thinking. I've got no right running a brewery. We've been open, what, 18 months? Big deal. Build it and they will come? Yeah, right. People will support a quality product? Well, where are they? We support you, Kev. Yeah, I know you're doing that. Thanks, pal. See you tomorrow. Why aren't the papers here? Man, why aren't the beer bloggers here? Are we not sexy enough? I mean, is that what sells beer now, sexy? Yeah, that's been a staple for some years. Yes. Yeah. Arlene, you're a hipster. Why aren't the hipsters here? I am not a hipster. Yeah, sure you are. You're, you're I mean, uh, no, I mean, young person. You're a young person. Why aren't the young people here? Kev, what you need to do is just put your head down and concentrate on your beers. You've got the Barley Fest coming up. What have you got that'll capture people's attention? Right now, nothing. I got nothing. Kev, let me tell you a little tale. Oh, here we go. There once was a little froggy who, despite his very best efforts, could never become the majestic raven that he always wanted to be. Every single day, the froggy would travel up to the highest point of the riverbed, and he would say, I am not a froggy. I am a majestic raven, and one day, I am going to fly far, far away from this pond. But at the end of every day, he was still just a little froggy. So he would climb back down to the pond and say, tomorrow, tomorrow I will become a majestic raven. This happened day in, day out, until one fine summer's morn. He was up on that hill and he was repeating his little froggy mantra. Guess what happened? Out of nowhere, a hawk swooped in and snatched the froggy up and flew far, far into the sunset. He got his wish. After days of hoping and praying, he got to fly far away from the pond. Question. Yes? Is this parable extolling the virtues of frog suicide? And as a follow-up question, is this the dumbest story you've ever told? I think we should address the fact that amphibians need to be constantly moist. And perhaps the fact that a grown man is using the term froggy. Mm. No, no, guys. Lud's on something here. I'm hearing you, Luddy. <laughs> what? You got something from that? He got his wish. It just didn't come in the form he was expecting. He got eaten. Doug, Kevin, the Bruce Stars, uh, listen, go ahead and ship that citra for me. Yeah, just on the account. Oh, and uh, you got some oak casks? Perfect, send me five. Thanks. This froggy is gonna fly! <laughs> this is gonna be a game changer! No, see, no, you just, why is it lost? Fine. What is that? Oh, we got at mentioned on Twitter. Let's take a look. We have a Twitter account? Yeah, I set it up a few months ago. I didn't know. Arlene, what does it say? Uh, who is Pete Gunderson? Pete Gunderson? Only the godfather of the craft brewing industry? Pete Gunderson is like the Michael Jackson of beer. Uh, Michael Jackson, the Scotch whiskey expert, not the pop star. We have very different values. What did he say? A new high in craft brew artistry has been reached. Be sure to order from Bruton Brewing. Oh, and then yeah, he used our Twitter handle instead of the one for this Bruton Brewing, whoever that is. My heart stopped for a second. Yeah, uh, Bruton's a huge company. He's probably got a marketing deal with him or something. Pete Gunnarsson tweeting us out. Wouldn't that be great, Lud? I mean, man, that'd be something else. He did, though. No, it was Bruton's he was talking about. I know that, but he used our Twitter handle to his almost 7.5 million followers. What is that, Kels? It's from the web server for online sales. 